Word on the street. Fish man show. What's the word on the street? Like who got the beast that be killing the game? Who's up on the scale? Who playing who was the score on the sheet? Peace so the prince got him taking the seat. Got the legends giving us the 411. Peace so much from the OD1. No haters, sports and entertainment, but we got it all and we're the only ones. And after all that action, action. I've been hopping, dripping out fashion. Dripping, dripping on some rich and nissy, but it's stylish and soaked up with passion. If it's giving us less, then we never settle. Make sure you pull up and bring all your medals. Sit back and relax, let's go. It's Chris Mass bringing you the Chris Mass show. It's the fist man 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 show. Yo, what up, what up, what up? This is the one, the only DJ Nays. Hope you're keeping up and keeping it well, man. You are currently locked into the one, the only Forex father, or as you know it, the Fismas show. You know, shout out to uh, my man Fiso doing big things right now. Forex father, take it home. I think, I think what makes it sweeter for me is beating a collaboration, you know. When... Uh, you remember during the bubble, we, in, at FNB you could not use the chief's change room. I mean, our countrymen could not use the change room. But this change room was open for, for Al Ali now, against us. And for me, winning this match was sweeter because I felt uh, chiefs was being spiteful by, by allowing that because we could have easily taken Al Ali to the change room that has got a ramp on the other side, that long distance. It's, a, it's our home match. But it's not our home match when, we, when they've got a change room of the, hood, of the home the team. Same, almost the same scenario last season. But uh, we don't talk about these things because we, we respect and we are patriotic. We, we've been in this space of the Champions League for many years now. We that wanted to train in our facility when they were coming to play Chiefs last year. But we did not allow we that to train in our facility because that would have meant we are, uh, we are forming an alliance with people from outside. So for me, more than beating uh, Al Ali, I think this is just a good lesson on patriotism, on respecting the fact that when we compete at the stage, we are no longer competing with the Sundowns badge. We are competing with uh, the, 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 the badge or the, the, the flag of the country. And it's very important that in as much as we, we are not saying we must create opponent enemies, but we must have a little bit more more respect of the fact that we are representing the country. Welcome to the Fist Man Show. It's episode two of season three, and it's all about the debate. Well, I've got some of your favorites in the studio today. Thanks for having me. Thanks for There's already smiles that I'm seeing. Hey, yeah, it's that time. It's that time. And of course, you would have heard that recording that just played there. Mangoba Mngiti not happy with kinds of chiefs. He's made himself very clear. Is he moaning? Is he being petulant? Is Kaiser Chiefs in the wrong? I bought the perfect UO to dissect this very topic because I tell you what, I know they'll have contrasting views, but I want to find out, are those views valid? Well, you know who it is. When I talk Chiefs and I talk, part, when I, rather when I talk Chiefs and I talk Sundowns, I can only bring in two people. I mean, really, I can only bring in two people. Menzing Novo, DJ Naves. Do, 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 do. If I had that horn, I would have gone. Do, 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 do. <laughs> Naves, you're a happy As man these days. They're doing well in Africa. How are you keeping? No complaints at all. Um, happy, you know. You know, happiness resides where there's winnings. So I'm, I'm, I'm happy. <laughs> I mentioned, you know, I, I, I'm sure you, you, you're a slightly happy man. You know, Kaiser Chiefs, of course, winning the derby against uh, Orlando Pirates, the mighty Orlando Pirates. Uh, happy there? I'm happy, uh, Fiso. I wouldn't lie and say I'm not. Among uh, told you these uh, six points don't tend to win. I'll be even happier because I'll be closer to the top than I currently am now. Oh, One of my be... games in hands and there's a hitting. So you, you'll be you'll be closer to Sundowns. That, that's what you're saying. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'll be closer to uh, my Sundowns. The sky's the limit. You know, on a puzzle. <laughs> I don't know what's up with your order. It's got a little little bit of a crackle there. Uh, I don't know what's if there's anything in your way there, but nonetheless, I'm going to start with you, Naves. Um, yeah. That recording there, we heard what Mangoba said. Um, take me through what's your thoughts as a, as a Sundowns man. It's a catch-22. 
I, I, I was sitting and thinking to myself that um, patriotism is such a tricky thing, right? For me personally, because when, when, when Alakhi played Kaiser Chiefs in the final, I went with my patriotism and went with the son of the soil. But then I thought if they were playing Zamalek who don't have a South African on there, would I be able to bring myself to support Kaiser Chiefs? And the answer is I'd rather die. <laughs> so it's a, it's a tricky one for me. It's a tricky one for well, me. Well, I sure I'd would. rather, in fact, I'd rather die or I'm just going to be silent about it. I will have no comment on it. But I don't see myself. No, I can't do that. My, 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 my conscience will not allow it. And, and, and you know what? That's fair enough. That's fair enough. I, I don't think there's anyone that can sit there as a, as a diehard fan. I know at times, you know, there are moments when patriotism can be there, but it's hard when it's, when it's a rival. You know, a direct rival. I cannot. You know? So, Menzi, uh, do you share the same sentiments as, as names with regards to that? And, and what are your thoughts with regards to I... what Mangova said? Look, there's a lot that, that's been said. I hope my audio is a bit better now. Just let me know if yeah. it's not so I can change my connection. But a, a, lot, a lot has been said about the story. And uh, for the first time since I've known names, I, I have to agree, it is a bit of a catch-22. Uh, I know Mango has been out in the media saying that uh, Kaiser Chiefs was not patriotic. I don't understand how patriotic you can be when it's a club continental competition, where it's literally a club versus club. Um, I understand that it's, it's, it's region-based and some clubs come from North Africa, we come from Southern Africa, but how, how many Kaiser Chiefs supporters were really rooting for Sundowns when they were in the final against the Allah? Of me, I know I wasn't one of them. You can hear you, my brother. Your audio is, is you having have data a problem. So, so maybe if you can, just try and switch your, your network or what, whatever uh, alternate plan you had and we'll just continue the conversation with Naves quickly. Um, Naves, I mean... Uh, I think the both of you are on the same page with regards to that. And I mean, if we dissect yeah. it really, you know, obviously there's a sense of unhappiness and, um, and from, from, from Coach Mangoba, uh, he felt that, you know, they played their part with regards to not allowing uh, White Dad to, to, to use their facilities. Um, but does that really do anything, you know, uh, in terms of preparation, you know, was that likely better off training the Chiefs, you know, w where does the so unhappiness come from? Let me tell you, I knowing Coach Pito, um, going to Kaiser Chiefs was uh, all a mental game, you know, uh, because they, you know we don't we don't get along with Kaiser Chiefs at all. Like he knows that, so going there was definitely. And you must also realize that uh, Kaiser Chiefs has um, taken, like, well, taken inverted commas. They have CBD, you know. They are very, they are, they are short of trying to take back all our players from that CBD era and putting them in the starting lineup to see how far it can get them. It's, it's where this thing is going. So I think for Coach Pizzo, it was definitely uh, a mental thing that he was trying to do there. But it's a catch-22, man, because, um, yeah, you know, because you do good to your neighbor doesn't mean your neighbor will do good to you, indirectly or directly. Because if, if, if I, we refuse Zamalek, and I was speaking to somebody who works for, for, for Kaiser Chiefs and their entire thing is around, no, we need to build relations as CAF is a, an important thing for us. And I was like, I don't also, I, I just think, and the problem is people think that we're bantering in most times when we start to say this. And I say, how can it be important for you when you cannot even win a trophy domestically? How can CAF be important to you? How can you say, no, we are investing in the future for CAF? You can't win domestically. So how are you going to play in CAF? Are you hoping that the two South African teams do well and we get a third spot and hopefully we can give it away to you? No, it doesn't work like that. And I mean, another thing with regards to that, I mean, you look at, you look at it from a perspective of, I mean, if you're building, if you're building relationships, well, what, what is the purpose of those sort of relationships, you know, in future? 100%. Are you looking to have a Kaiser Chiefs Academy up north? Are you looking to, you know, to swap players at some stage? Where does that building I mean, come from? Or is it just a building as in we're going to be friends, you know? 
Yeah, the only thing I really got away and took away from this thing is that they have nice facilities at the village. They have great facilities that, um, you know, but uh, as well, I want to uh, uh, correct something there. I think the, the, the science sports tax has the very same facilities in Pretoria, the Sports Science Institute. All of the things that they spoke about, they are there at tax. So also we mustn't confuse exposure as facts. So if I've only been exposed to Chiefs and the Royal uh, Marang Hotel, it doesn't mean these things don't exist elsewhere. We must be very careful with that. Yeah, Menzi. Can I come in there? So yeah. I, hope, I, hope I, I hope I sound a bit better. Um, th there's obviously a backstory to all of this, Fiso. Uh, you guys will know when Upito left uh, for Al Ahli in 2020, um, he didn't necessarily leave uh, under the best, uh, best of circumstances. Uh, there is bad blood between himself and the management left at Sundowns. So, like Unev said, there's, there's, there's a, an element of mind games that, that's at play that, that we cannot ignore. Uh, besides the mind games, um, there, there is, there is a, a massive bridge that's been burnt between the relations Yabo, Coach Mangoba, Rulani, and Upito himself. Uh, I don't think a, a club as big as Al Ahli would have struggled to find a facility like the one the Chiefs has, and rightfully so. Unev said the, the high performance center at Tux has exactly the same facilities, and I'm sure it's not the only one. Mm. So it, it, it cannot be an issue of I think that's the only facility we could find that matches the standards that we want. I think it's an issue of uh, we want to poke your nose, your nose to spite mm. your face. Uh, and, and I think Umar Nova took it quite literally as that, because I think it was intended as that, to be honest with you. I don't think it was just in a bilateral relations between the Northerns and the Southerns. I think it was intended to, to, to sort of stir up the pot and to make this, the, the tie even spicier than it actually was, which, which it was spicy it, 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 in itself. Got the, the element that added Wuti Bay with Chiefs and used them as their base it definitely added to the narrative of the story and it, it, it turned out quite nicely. And I'm actually glad the Sundowns won the game because it, 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 would, have, it would have been a bit bitter had al Ahli won the game because it would have felt like South Africans selling short another group of South Africans to, to the northern enemy. Uh, and again, just quickly before you take over, Fiso, I don't see how our relations between al Ahli and Chiefs could really be built by this. I mean... Uh, clubs are selling players to, to clubs or to each other all the time. You don't have to have bilateral um, diplomacy uh, um, ties with each other to sell uh, players to each other. You don't need to have bilateral relations to, to take a coach when he's out of contract or to sign a player when he, or to loan a player or to even learn from whatever they're doing. It's something that happens around the world. We don't need to treat each other with kids and gloves when it comes to this issue. We all know Chiefs doesn't like sundowns. Upito despises sundowns. And it just, it made sense. Woody, let's, let's bond up now against them and make it really spicy. And it was. That's my take on it. Yeah, it's, it's, really, surpri it's really surprising. And I, I mean, wow. I think it's, it's a miracle because Naves and Nancy wow. are on the same page. <laughs> wow. I'm impressed. I'm, I mean, we are grooming a very fine gentleman here. I'm very impressed. <laughs> Yeah, I know. I mean, I mean, I look at it and uh, the irony in it all, you know, you looked at when Sundowns, I mean, when Pizzo was at his pump at Sundowns and he was winning tr trophies for fun, he always had a little nibble at Chiefs. He always had a, a little bit of a dig at Chiefs, you know, he'd always be like, ah, only Pirates can play with us. Ah, those other ones, you know, like those sort <laughs> of comments. And now yeah. it's like, oh, okay, you know, hey, you're, a, a friend of my enemy is my, you know what I mean? Whatever that saying is. 100%. But also, it would have been, it's, it, I think, I mean, what else was he, and I'm not trying to be funny, but what was going to be the other compliment that he could pass on outside of saying they have great facilities that we can use? You know what I mean? Like, you can't go in and say, no, they have a, an amazing coach. What else could he say? And also, it's not like the facility is in use. No, I'm a trainee. I'm a trainee. <laughs> they, they weren't training. That's why they were able to give away the facility. 
you mean they weren't training? They weren't training. They off. What do you mean they weren't Babakai training? Off. They were off. They were like, Alakhli is coming. We're going to give you off so that it's not like training helps. I get better, man. Yeah, but then these are routine stops during the season. I ain't going to do it. You can't have players off during the season. I ain't going to do it. Just trying to stir the pot. The players were there. But what are you talking about? Yeah, they were there. 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 Again, so they were also here's another pictures. thing I wanted to add. Here's another thing I wanted to add. Hey, man, here's another pictures. thing I wanted to add. <laughs> <laughs> We're taking pictures of that. Actually, guys. Hey, man. <laughs> no, Shaba was taking pictures. Uh, I want to add something here. I want to add something here, guys. Something really, I think, is very pertinent to the conversation. And I understand, Uti, why Umang Noba was really having a hissy for the Uti board. They were approached by Widad. and they denied them access when they came here and wanted to use their facilities i mean i i mean it was their choice they decided not to give you that i'm a facilities i because i think it wasn't because of chiefs this is my take it was because of them if we that as much as much as ialaki are one of sundown's biggest rivals as well on the continent now why would you allow someone who you will be fighting championships with to come into your home base and see what you are about I think that's the reason why they said they mustn't come. It, it couldn't have been with hey, we are thinking about Chiefs as our fellow South African team. Therefore we will deny the opponent the, op- the opportunity to use our facilities to prepare. I don't think it had anything to do with that. It was a choice they made for themselves that benefited them. And I think I, I also have to say this quickly. It it, it says a lot about our ambitions of a club like the Kaiser Chiefs to allow Al Ahly to just prance around your backyard, go through the kitchen and past the living room. Because at the end of the day, Shuti Tina, what are we saying about ourselves as Chiefs? Uti, we are not good enough to say we are competing against you. City, City, we will open our doors to you and allow you to come and see what we do. As if to say, last season was a was a was a shot in the dark to compete against you in the final. Next time, we probably need you to help us. I don't know what the hell they were doing. Like, like, even the Chiefs now. Yeah, but great PR exercise. People have forgotten about Chiefs. No one really thinks about them anymore. So bring down and actually take pictures with them now and one speaking about the chiefs because really there's nothing else to talk about to be honest with you. Yeah, hey, I mean hey I'm surprised. <laughs> hey, I've never heard this man like this. <laughs> and I mean Mendy makes a great point, you know, um because a lot of times, you know, when you speak of I mean we can speak of patriotism, we can speak of, you know, a lot of things, but at the end of the day, Kaiser Chiefs should be looking themselves as one of the giants of the continent. And you, you, How often do you, would you hear of if you look at European football? I guess as the standard bearer, I mean, you won't often hear that oh, Arsenal are training at Man United, you know, because they're playing against Man City. It's just it's not going to happen, um, you know. No. Uh, so it is it is quite a weird thing. And again, you know, it's funny because then you you look at you look at that and you think, okay, what was the end goal here? You know, um, yeah. Yes, you put it there. Uh, sorry to interrupt you. I realize that, like, when, for example, when uh, Sundowns travels to Durban, they don't go and whether they're playing Marisbe, Kamazulu, Golden Arrows, they don't go use their training facilities. They go and use the Crawford High School facilities. You know, there's there's just there's always a plan that can be made. There's no ways only the the the, the, the Premiership teams have training facilities. That it doesn't make sense at all. That so it it, it, it more than anything, if it was look. If they are saying for them it was a PR and marketing thing, we know that they are good at that. We cannot fight them on that. That they are good at give them full colors. But outside of that, there is nothing more to it than, I mean, it's symbolic what happened there. It shouldn't be allowed this thing. I mean, Kaiser Chiefs is a great club, no doubt. The history speaks for itself, but I think it's all being wiped away. Yeah, and and Menz is nodding his head. I guess you're approving of what Nave said there. I mean, I is, it, is it I as strong as that? I mean, obviously we've seen the fortunes on the field. It hasn't quite clicked over the past few seasons. Uh, so close to winning the title a few years back, and Sundown obviously snatched it right at the end. You know, there, there's been a lot of things on the field that have left fans with, uh, I guess, a bitter taste in their mouths. Will this sort of a, uh, an event, if I can call it that, also do the same? You know, especially for you. I think all it does is further enhance Kaiser Chiefs' um, stronghold in terms of being the PR giants of the game in our country. Uh, other than that, I don't see much 
uh, of any stir. And I think actually what we need in our football, besides all of these PR studs, we just need the fans to go back to the stadium so that the players can be accountable for their performances on the field. We need fans back at the stadium so that the players can account for their performances. Because what I'm seeing now is that not only are the performances lackluster, there's a lack of accountability by the players because the fans make the players account for what they do on the field. I think that's what's missing. Le, Le Piaf stance that Chiefs did, I mean, it worked because I'm sure they were trending over the past couple of days. Um, the rates were high, the ratings were high, the sponsors were happy, but that's not going to improve the product on the field. That's not going to improve that we don't have a striker. That's not going to improve that we're not creating enough chances. That's not going to improve that we have a, a case hanging over our head of two games that we're probably not going to be even given a chance to play because in all intents and purposes, we should have gone and honored the fixture. So it's mm-hmm. not going to change the fact that Sundowns is running away with the league. So mm-hmm. I don't see how much of a direct impact it's going to make on the actual game itself. But all the other peripheral issues, maybe it may have something to do with that. Nate, do you want to pick it's, up this? Also, yeah, man, I, I think you, <laughs> for the first time, I want to say Menzi is Bohambang online. I'm I'm impressed. I am so I've never been so impressed in my life. I am so impressed. It's also I was having this conversation with someone. I'm like, Kaiser Chiefs has gone and bought um Sitebe. What are you getting from Sitebe? A player that hasn't played or kicked football, a ball in six months. I don't know. I don't know. That's who you're bringing in. I'm actually upset that I went to a different view there. I want I, I miss Menzi, the capture of Menzi just putting his head down. He's like, yo. <laughs> I cannot, I cannot, like, that's what you're bringing in? Abang, Abang, Abang. Six months. And you want to come and say, this guy is going to change your fortunes in the middle of the field. How are you going to, man, Kobe put this thing the best. Kobe said, when he started um, training and realizing that basketball is what he's going to do forever, when the team had one session, by the time they got to that one session, um, of practice a day, which was usually at like 3 p.m. He had done a 6 a.m. workout, 11 a.m. workout, does the team workout, and then does a final one at home. By the time everybody else wakes up to catch up, to, to think, oh, I need to be doing this. He's been doing this for three, four years. How are you going to catch up on three, four years? Now, in the modern game, for you to buy a player that's been sitting in the stands for six months, and expect him to come through and uh, and they can they, they somebody was saying to me no it'll be like an injured player coming in from uh coming back from injury i'm like no that guy is not injured so he's well aware that he's okay and how are you gonna who you come on no man not six months they should have just given amazulu the money and like got him the player again eh, for me there's there's always there's always so much debate around that you know around pre-contracts and i, I know there was a bit of there was a bit of, you know, one person said this. Penny was like, if he's fit, I'm going to use him. Sunday the Zoom was like, he's dying. He's not going to play at my club. Where do the both of you stand with regards to that when players sign pre-contracts? Is there still a place for them to play if they prepare to be professional and work hard? Or, you know, um, should it just cut your ties? I mean, how, at the end of the day, no one wins in, the, in that particular situation. I think if the player is honest with the team to say, guys, I will not be re-signing, Instead of uh, all of this gray area of I'm thinking about this and that, but you signed a pre-contract, I think it makes for better and for mu- far much more peaceful um, uh, ending, you know. But in the instance where you go and you sign a pre-contract outside of the window and, 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 and it leaves a bit of taste. The thing is, when Duffy, so uh, contract negotiations in our, in, our, in our football value chain don't happen in good faith. Nine king, they don't happen in good faith on all sides, on all parties. They don't happen in good faith in the selling club, the buying club, the agent, the player. They hold on to the truth until the very last minute, and that affects the entire value chain of the product. So, so Tolo Wuti, um, at some point during the story, someone will say he said, someone will say she said. At the end of the day, none of these parties are negotiating in good faith. That is why in Europe it's clean. Everyone knows what Urudiga is not signing with Chelsea. He said that for the past five, six months. Woody, he's not really contemplating renewing his contract with Chelsea. 
So they know. But that doesn't change what he's a bloody good defender and they need him in the team. So there's clarity. Oh, Thomas Tuchel knows, Woody, this guy is not going to sign. He's probably not going to be here in the next four or five months. But I need him now. He's got to run on, until May of fixtures where I need the strongest team to play. Lie South Africa, when they spoke to Sitebe, he was like, no, I'm renewing. My agent spoke to the chairman. Meanwhile, he's met with Chiefs already and signed a pre-contract. Then they find mm. out in the papers, one of them couldn't keep quiet about it. Now, they are being spiteful by not playing him. These guys are saying, we're wiping our hands clean. I saw a sign a pre-contract. Meanwhile, there is a pre-contract that's busy trying ink somewhere in someone's shelves. Mm. And it's a mess. So how do you play a guy like that? You're not going to play him because you can't trust him. What was Ojala and I against Chiefs? And then if he, unfortunately, he concedes on own goal as or twins, I'm a ball. You know? So the best thing that South African clubs do is just they not play anyone. Yeah. At all. Just try and avoid all of that chaos and all of that mess. You know, but in good faith in terms of negotiation in South Africa, Aiko. Aiko. Yeah. we have a in culture when it comes to that. I think we're the only team that played uh, billiard until the last day yeah. when he had yeah. done the pre-contract thing. And I also think um, Stellenbosch with uh, the, who's that left winger, Rain Reinica, who went to Super Sport? Reynes, yeah. Reynes, they also allowed it. But generally, it's not something that, that is done like uh, locally. It's generally not it's frowned upon. Yeah, I know. I'd say it. Yeah, I mean, it, it is quite sad because you almost feel, I mean, like Nate was saying, you know, to lose six months of, of your career, that momentum that you kind of, and a lot of times you probably, you probably find a player who has been playing quite well um, mm. and, 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 and then becomes headhunted. I mean, I'm trying to recall exactly how the George Malulega situation went down, but he was an example of a player who six months to go is like, no, I'm going to essentially go to, 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 to sundowns. And, hasn't obviously panned out for him the way he would have wanted. We know the quality that he has. And yeah. maybe Sundowns can just, come on, just give him back. Just give him back, Neves. I told, I told Neves in the last episode that we did, I told him. Okay, that's fine. That's fine. But George has been at Sundowns for how long now? Uh, what, four months, five months? If not longer. Okay. What does the trophy cabinet look like? It can't. It can't be. It, it, it isn't. Isn't George been there for a season already? He's been there for a season. Yeah, season and season and a half essentially. So he's got the PSL. He's got the. I, mean, I don't. I don't count trophy. Yeah, but you see, you also have a network problem. <laughs> I I told you about this Malaka. <laughs> I want you. Your team is giving away airtime. You must enter that competition. <laughs> People are calling me la bang for Nella Bantula. Sorry, guys. <laughs> no, no t- t- tell them we're almost done. We're almost done. Yeah, Navis, you can you can pick up. Yeah. So look, not everyone, look, bro, not every I mean, you guys make the case of George, but there's other players that have moved to teams and not played. You know, it's just to which it's highlighted because it's sundowns. Yeah, I'm told. There's a, that yeah. guy, man, there was a left wing, uh, left back that Kaiser Chiefs bought from Swallows at, some time ago. Um, the guy with the with the dreadlocks. He stayed at Kaiser Chiefs for four years, didn't even, I think he played, came on as a substitute once. Mm. But yeah, nobody's banter, making a noise about that. Yeah, I got the banter aside when I, when I was, I'd rather be a, a, a sundowns reserve who's not playing than be a starter at Chiefs right now. I'll be bluntly honest with you. I saw uh, one of these sundown shows on Supersport, uh, a training session in Sundowns. They were doing a periodization training. So they were doing small-sided game way, covered defense, comes from wide, and then a striker tries to go to the mini goals. I saw it touch got George. He did not look like a person who hasn't played for like four months or whatever. He looked sharp and he looked like he was enjoying himself. I think he scored Laban in the drill and he was celebrating like he's in the starting 11. That means, Woody, the vibe and the atmosphere La Piana, is nice. You know, I'd rather have that than knowing what's okay. I know, you, George, I know, okay. I'm glad why. I forget the other guy. I mean, come on, that's why I'm... Rivaldo could see, you know? yeah. 
it's about mm. I, that's why I'm not playing. It's not like yeah. I don't want to name my my players. What it's not like to <laughs> someone. <else. laughs> Jalu Aki. So that you can akum. Until long pagat. Yeah, no. You know, bad. Yeah. I mean, he would walk right back into the Chiefs starting 11, let's be honest. Yeah, well, yeah. He would walk right back. Uh, that just shows how much how much we've improved as a side since he's left. In fact, in fact we, we've We've regressed. We've become worse than what he it was when he was there. I actually think if he stayed on and if we played him, maybe we could have gotten over the line last season. I think, you know, I think we missed him. To be honest with you, we 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 missed that type of player, and we've tried a few people in that position. It hasn't worked out for us. So, like, like he may be surplus to requirements of sundowns, but we 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 would we would use a player like that for sure. Yeah, Nays, give the guy, man, give him back, man. We're not giving anything back. This is not a charitable organization. <laughs> we are here to dominate. And I want to tell you guys this thing. Mark my words. In the coming window, if there's a player that stats and actual game shows that he is amazing, we will sign him. Mm. We'll leave nothing on the market that we think will benefit us. Mm. You see, Ngobeni, we've sent him to Super Sport. He might only come into fruition for us in two seasons' time. But when he does, he'll be amazing. I personally am not a fan of Mudao. Hey, but he's playing well. Ah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You know, but it's a season, two seasons later, two and a half seasons later, and he's starting to come to form. Mm. But I will stand by what I'm saying. I am not a fan of the guy. If I was the coach, that guy wouldn't make my traveling 21 squad. Mm. If I was the coach. But once again, I'm scarred from when they first brought him in and the mistakes he was making. So I haven't been able to get over that. I, I tell, I'm not disputing. I won't take away that he's playing well and he's doing well now, but I am scared. And you know what this thing about football is? If you make those silly mistakes once, you can do it again. Mm. I know is an unforgiving fan, but it's fine. Yeah. I, but yeah. It's, it's hard, hard Muna. It's hard. It's hard. It's hard, <laughs> it's hard, Muna. It's, it's hard. What if he does that thing again? Then <laughs> I've wasted my forgiveness. <laughs> Yeah, and and just just a quick one. I I I get what you're saying, um, and you've said this in the past as, well. and I've 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 had to take some time to to sort of process what you've said in the past with regards to um, the, the signing or the buying policy of of Sundowns, which which I understand fully. It makes sense in terms of what they're about, but the Mkwena signing for me, oh, it 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 it, it sort of left a bit of a sore spot on me. I felt like he, he, that was the only opportunity he had to take a peek at Europe, I feel. Um, but because the, the offer was too good and, and, and the money was too good and what they were giving him was too good, he then decided to stay on the continent to, 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 to play for Sundowns. And I feel maybe seven years ago, he would have made a different choice. He would have gone to Europe and, and, and tried his luck there in terms of establishing a career there. So I, I think, yes, yes, they are, they are names in this, like they are good elements to what you guys are doing. And I can't, I can't back you down on that. But I feel like a, a guy like Mkwen had a really good opportunity for, for a, a career in, in Europe. I fully, 100% agree with you that he had a better opportunity for Europe. But if Europe doesn't table an offer, there is no opportunity. And that's the bottom line. They did not table a physical offer. They had made contact, but they didn't table an offer. Mm -hmm. I think that's sat down. Point. That's it. Was sat down for now? No, it's, 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 it's like it's like for example, you know, Mabona in Tongi, and Ufunu we share la pata we share the niya gui tori. The only way you can get a player is you must table an offer. No I offer. Know. No offer to the look, no, I, I, 
I hear you guys. I hear you guys. And I think, you know, it's always nice chatting with you guys because I always feel like the, the conversations just evolve and we could literally stumble onto another topic now, but I've only got two minutes of recording time left. So I'm going to have to let you go. Uh, and hopefully, you know, we get Menzi out here in Joburg, we get in the studio yeah. and we do this thing yeah. the right way, you know? Um, but yeah, thank you very much for your time again, Jens. Um, I guess the conclusion to that is, yeah, Pizzo, al Ahli, Kaiser Chiefs, they came together and it left a, a bitter taste in Sundown's mouth. And from the Kaiser Chiefs man himself, he said that he didn't understand it. I hope that fans who are listening in or who are watching will, I guess, get something from this conversation with regards to that. But I'm, one thing I'm happy about today, hey, these two, they behave today. Maybe it's because they, had, they, were, on the same, they were on the same wavelength and they agreed with, with each other. But yeah, the... Welcome to the Well Behaved Society. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> thank you. Thank you, this one. <laughs> no, thank you very much, guys. I really enjoyed the chat. Um, I'm going to let you go now. I know, Menzi, you need to get back to work. Naves, uh, what, time, what time is your show? A little bit later on. Uh, I think Naves has got his drive show a little bit later on. So, you could miss Gisela. But it's fine. Enjoy it while it lasts. Hey, is that an announcement? Oh, the first show. Yay! Hey, April April. It's April. Hey, All right, that's an announcement. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna claim that, gentlemen. We're out of time. <laughs> Enjoy the rest of the week and be safe. Shab, thank you. Shab, 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 shab. It's been, it's been good. It's been positive. Uh, good conversations with the gentlemen. And yeah, we've got to wrap it up for today. So that's the conclusion, I guess. Make sure that you keep subscribing and you keep following the show on all platforms. Until next time. Bye bye.